Mind if I ask you a quick question? Have you noticed in the last few years that CBD oil is f***ing everywhere? You can buy it at grocery stores, gas stations, hair salons, even your local bar mitzvahs. Just about anywhere. In fact, 14% of Earth's surface has been permanently dedicated to CBD oil. At this point, it's basically a fiat currency. But the question that's plagued CBD enthusiasts over the last few years is does it really work? We may never know the meaning of life, or if Atlantis actually existed, or if Oswald was the lone shooter. But one thing we will know today is does CBD work? One thing that does work for sure is using science-backed routines to develop productive habits. I'm talking about the digital coaching app, Fabulous. With over 30 million users worldwide, Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits. If you don't sleep well or have a hard time staying with routines, Fabulous's tracking feature can help you stay with healthy habits, such as a better sleep schedule or daily reminders to stay on track. This habit tracking feature is backed by behavioral science and is 100% personalized to allow you to go at your own pace. I do not have the best sleep schedule. I have to stay up late to finish videos and then go to work the next day. To help with my sleep, I've been using a fabulous night. It's been a great tool in setting up a sleep schedule for my routine. Per their advice, they suggested I disconnect from my phone and computer a half hour before bed and keep a notebook out for those late night thoughts. Overall, this new routine has really helped improve my sleep and made me more productive. Start building your ideal daily routine today. The first 100 people who click on the link will get 25% off a fabulous subscription. Firstly, we need to know the history of CBD and how it became the ubiquitous supplement we know today. CBD, or cannabidiol, is a nonpolar phytocannabinoid from the cannabis sativa plant, known better as marijuana. It's extracted from hemp oil which comes from the stalk and stems of the cannabis plant, so it's nearly void of the psychoactive THC. CBD was first isolated by chemist Roger Adams at Illinois University in 1940. By the 1980s, organic chemist Raphael McCollum discovered CBD's anti-epileptic properties and could potentially treat seizures. However, with the aggressive war on drugs emerging in the 1970s, cannabis was renamed as a Schedule I drug. All scientific research involving marijuana came to a screeching halt. With decriminalization and legalization of cannabis beginning in the mid-2000s, access to CBD became much easier, and therefore research began to take off. Now, there's a lot of uses for CBD oil, but the main three that I found were the most common were pain relief, anti-anxiety, and treatment for seizures. This is where we put on our science hats. First off is pain relief. <laughs> It's believed CBD has analgesic effects in pain management due to its action on inflammation. Several cell culture studies in both humans and rat cells have shown that when exposed to CBD, cells produce less pro-inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines are molecules that signal immune cells to respond to pathogens or trauma in the body. Generally, immune cells respond by inducing inflammation in the body, which then causes pain. For pain relief, it's pretty straightforward. If you reduce inflammation in a chronic condition, like rheumatoid arthritis or back injury, you reduce pain. Several studies tested this very theory using CBD. Between 2003 and 2020, seven different studies tested CBD's effects on 600 test subjects. Participants were selected based on chronic pain conditions, such as spinal cord injury, brain plexus damage, peripheral neuropathy, fibromyalgia, and general chronic pain. Subjects were randomized into two groups, CBD versus placebo. Across all studies, CBD subjects reported a significant reduction in pain, an overall improvement in quality of life, and improved sleep, as opposed to the placebo group. However, despite a potential mechanism explaining pain reduction, there are two issues that hinder CBD being a legitimate pain reliever. Firstly, cell culture studies, even on human cells, do not entirely translate to effective pain relieving properties. As I've mentioned before in previous videos, cell culture studies are just a small component of the entire formula. Culture tests are merely a stepping stone on how something might work in the human body. We don't know for sure if cytokine reduction in cell cultures is sufficient to reduce pain in a full-grown adult. Secondly, there's numerous over-the-counter pain relievers that are known to work and are very affordable. For example, there's aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol, a few minutes later, and Vimovo. That about covers it. All of these are effective anti-inflammatory agents that reduce pain and, let's be honest, are a fraction of the price of CBD oil. Without clinical trials on CBD's pain management, we can't say for sure that it's an efficacious and cost-effective pain reliever. 
what about CBD's anti-anxiety properties? In contrast to pain relief, CBD has been studied extensively for its anxiolytic effects. Since many anti-anxiety medications are of the pharmaceutical flavor and typically offer unwanted side effects. A 2021 study from the Journal of the American Medical Association studied the effects of CBD on frontline medical workers and their burnout during the pandemic. Burnout was assessed using the Maslach Burnout Inventory, which is a psychological questionnaire that determines mental and emotional burnout among medical professionals, teachers, social workers, occupational groups, and college students. 120 nurses were randomized into two groups. Group 1 received a placebo and standard care, and Group 2 received 300 mg of CBD and standard care. Both groups were studied for 28 days. As a result, Group 2 nurses had a significant reduction in burnout scores at Day 14 and Day 28 of the study, as opposed to Group 1. In a different study, this time from the Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology, 24 subjects diagnosed with social anxiety disorder and 12 healthy controls were randomized into two groups, one with placebo and one with 600 mg of CBD. Both groups were instructed to undergo a public speaking simulation. Physiological measurements of each subject were taken, such as heart rate, blood pressure, and skin conductance, for perspiration. Subjects with social anxiety disorder that received CBD before the simulation had a significant reduction in anxiety response, more so than social anxiety subjects that did not receive CBD. It's great that CBD may have anti-anxiety effects, but why is this the case? Is there any reason for why this happens? Tide goes in, tide goes out. You can't explain that. In fact, there is. The answer is an endocannabinoid called anatomide. Endocannabinoids are molecules that our body makes to help regulate pain, memory, mood, and stress by binding to cannabinoid receptors, these same receptors that THC binds to. Anatomide plays a major role in stress response in humans, and is known as the bliss molecule. When it binds to cannabinoid receptors, it causes a mild feeling of bliss and euphoria, making your mood more positive and relaxed. Small amounts of anatomide are also found in chocolate, which is why you may feel a sudden positive mood when you eat chocolate. The reason why anatomide doesn't make us feel relaxed and positive all the time is because it has a very short lifespan in the body. As soon as it's made, it's quickly broken down by the enzyme, fatty acid amide hydrolase, or FAAH for short. So you don't get a lot of anatomide in your system for very long. However, plot twist, CBD inhibits this enzyme and therefore delays the breakdown of anatomide, which increases the exposure time to cannabinoid receptors, improving mood and reducing anxiety and stress. If you want hard evidence for this, here you go. In 2012, a study in the Journal of Frontiers in Pharmacology randomized 39 patients with schizophrenia into two groups. One group received amisulopride, an antipsychotic medication, and the other, CBD. Blood samples were drawn from both groups and anatomide serum levels were measured. Overall, subjects who took CBD had significantly higher levels of anatomide in their blood, and a significant decrease in psychotic symptoms as opposed to the amisulopride group. One of CBD's most well-known therapeutic benefits is its anti-seizure properties. It's believed CBD may decrease neuron excitability, therefore causing a drop in seizure frequency. And get this, there's actually clinical trial data. It's about time! Yo. It's about time! <laughs> Between 2014 and 2018, there were three major clinical trials testing the efficacy of CBD in treating epilepsy. 550 patients with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome or Dravet syndrome, two common seizure disorders, were randomized between CBD and placebo groups. And here's the results. In the first study, the CBD group had a 39.5% drop in seizures, as opposed to the placebo which only saw a 17.2% drop. In the second study, CBD subjects had a 50% drop in convulsive seizures. The placebo group only saw a drop of 27%. Additionally, 5% in the CBD group were completely seizure-free, as opposed to the placebo group which was 0%. In the final study, the CBD group showed a 43.9% drop in monthly seizures, as opposed to the placebo which was only 21.8%. In 2018, the FDA approved the only CBD medication for seizure treatment, called Epidiolex, with a CBD concentration of 100 mg per milliliter. Since its release on the market, Epidiolex has been found to reduce seizure frequency in disorders such as tuberous sclerosis complex, Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, and Dravet syndrome. So there you have it. CBD is effective and has little to no side effects. 
or so that's what most CBD companies would like you to believe. The fact of the matter is, CBD is not harmless and does have negative side effects. With more and more states legalizing marijuana, the thought among the public is if cannabis is natural and practically harmless, which is not entirely true, CBD, which also comes from cannabis, must be harmless as well. I mean, have you heard anything negative about CBD at all? I'm not saying CBD has terribly negative side effects like cocaine or chemotherapy, but bad effects in general should be known. For example, in nearly all the studies previously mentioned in this video, between 10 and 20% of the subjects had negative side effects after taking CBD such as diarrhea, fatigue, fever, nausea, vomiting, and even elevated liver enzymes. The first of these aren't horrible and are pretty common with most therapeutic drugs. However, the last one, elevated liver enzymes, is a big deal. Since CBD is metabolized in the liver, byproducts of CBD may cause mild injury to the liver tissue. If liver enzymes are chronically elevated for too long, it can cause fatty liver disease. These side effects don't affect the majority of people, but do affect a subset who use CBD. It's important to know that this is not a side effect free treatment, and you should always talk to your doctor before using it. Another overlooked aspect of CBD is the alleged purity of the oil being sold. Except for Epidiolex, which is approved by the FDA, all other CBD products sold are not regulated by the FDA. This means there's no stringent testing or oversight to ensure that what you're buying is what it's claimed to be. Now, you may think, what company would want to sell a product that doesn't work? Well, it turns out a lot. Between 2015 and 2021, the FDA sent multiple warning letters to 77 CBD companies for inaccurate or misleading CBD concentrations. A few cases from the report are as follows. Five companies alleged CBD doses of 21 milligrams, two at 50 milligrams, one at 500 milligrams, and another at 1500 milligrams. After a lengthy FDA analysis, it was determined that there was approximately zero, zip, nada, nothing of any presence of any cannabinoids in the products at all. One company alleged their product contained 26% CBD by volume, but analysis determined it to only be 0.14%, less than 1% by volume. Another company sold capsules with a concentration of 25 milligrams of CBD per capsule. FDA analysis found it to only be 0.031 milligrams per capsule. There's a lot more examples, but this video is going on 12 and a half minutes, so you get the picture. Because CBD is not regulated by the FDA, the CBD you're buying is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, real or fake. In conclusion, CBD may have pain relieving effects. Some cell culture studies indicate this is a possibility, but clinical trials are needed to verify it. As far as anti-anxiety properties, there's a much stronger indication of a mechanism in human subjects as to how CBD may alleviate anxiety, and there are some studies that reflect this. Obviously, clinical trials are really needed to hit this home. Regarding seizures, the FDA has approved a CBD medication called Epidiolex, which reduces the frequency of seizures across different epileptic disorders. Again, consult with your doctor. Finally, all CBD, except this one, is not regulated by the FDA, so it's all a box of chocolates, and is not entirely side effect free. So do your research and talk with your doctor.